Hello and welcome to another conversation with Karina. I'm Kit Watts, the communication strategist for the IMEX Group, and I'm here today with Karina Bauer, our CEO. And we've got great news, which is that IMEX in Frankfurt is going ahead in 2022. We haven't had one of those since the um, since the pandemic in 2019. So, Karina, can you tell us? apart from anything about the lifting of restrictions, which is a fantastic piece of news for the show. Yeah, absolutely. It was fantastic to see Germany lifting all of their COVID restrictions um, just last week, in fact, at the beginning of April and coming into line with a lot of other um, destinations around the world. Um, of course, we know that there are different comfort levels of people. Um, this pandemic has affected people in different ways. So we've looked at that really carefully. I think the, the one thing to say is now that the restrictions are lifted, it means that anybody can attend a show. Um, no matter their uh, vaccination status, which was obviously different for when we held IMEX America last November. So we're really pleased about that. But we are keeping in place a lot of the things that we had planned anyway to create a more comfortable experience for people. Um, so wider aisles in some areas, uh, two entrances for the hall, really thinking through the flow of the show, how people enter, making sure that um, we minimise crowding in every area of the show, including registration. Registration. Um, one of the things we did at IMEX America was print at home badges and that went down really well. Of course people can come and print a badge if they want a proper one um, once they get there but it just meant that the flow into the show was so smooth and we didn't have queues at registration. Um, so all of those things we're doing. We're also using more outdoor space for some of the seating and cafe areas. Um, so yeah, so there are a lot of innovations and changes that we had planned anyway as a necessity that we're keeping because because we actually think the show is going to be um, much more comfortable for people that way. And I hope that will give people comfort as well if they um, have any concerns that they can still come and have a really comfortable show experience. Um, and obviously uh, people have a choice as to whether to wear a mask or not and people should feel very comfortable doing whatever it is um, that is their comfort level. Mm. So talking about the show, can you give us a sense of the scale and the scope of uh, IMEX in Frankfurt 2022? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're really excited, I, I think, to just see the industry coming back and resurging really strongly. And I think that, um, you know, the size and scale of the show is reflective of the industry as a whole, which has almost been in hibernation in a way for two years. Um, and people didn't know what to expect coming back. So I think coming to IMEX in Frankfurt, they'll really see all the countries are present, all the hotel groups are present, all the agencies are present, the destination management companies, everybody that you would expect to see really. And in terms of size and scale, I think for those people who were at IMEX America last November or saw um, what it was about online, um, IMEX in Frankfurt will be a very similar size and scale we expect to what IMEX America was last November, which is a significantly sized show, not the same size as it was in 2019, but still all the destinations um, and hotel groups and major companies um, represented. We've got actually the largest um, African area that we've ever had. Um, Asia has also come back much quicker than we expected at the beginning of the year. So you'll see a large number of the Asian destinations. Of course, Europe is there, um, a presence from North America, a solid presence from South America as well. So yeah, I think people will be uh, very pleasantly surprised. And of course, a bigger tech area, which is also what we had at IMEX America. So um, I think, you know, for those people that want to really understand where the industry's at, um, they will be able to come to IMEX in Frankfurt and will truly be able to see the industry again and, and meet their colleagues and peers from all across the world. Mm. It's going to be a great moment. Can you clarify our position, IMEX's position on Russia and the Ukraine? Yeah, absolutely. So we came out um, about a month ago and just stated that um, we wouldn't have any um, Russian state um, companies participating at the show. What that really means for us as IMEX is that Russia as a destination and the cities, the convention centers, unfortunately, uh, will not be able to participate. Obviously, there's also a flight ban from Russia into Germany. And so um, as well as that, we expect uh, we don't expect participation from Russian buyers either. Um, but we do want to be very careful about um, not discriminating 
fighting against Russian people who might live all across the world and want to participate in the show. They may represent um, Western co companies um, and they are obviously very welcome. And I think that distinction between state-owned um, uh, companies and Russian individuals who have that nationality, I think we should be very careful about that. And we're going to be doing some work at the show just to signpost the industry to initiatives and other projects where they can offer help. Um, so that would be very evident. People will notice that when they get Absolutely. there. Absolutely. We know that there's a lot of demand in the industry to also show our support to Ukraine, to the Ukrainian Convention Bureau, to see how us as an industry can show up. And so we'll be helping people um, to, as you say, signpost to the different opportunities available whilst at the show. So let's go back to the detail of the show and talk a little bit, or if you would talk a little bit, about what we've done over the last couple of years, um, where we haven't been idle, how we have uh, stayed true to our sort of our commitment to reinventing IMEX each time there's a show. Uh, and can you perhaps start by talking a little bit about some of the myth-busting myth that we've done? Um, yeah, it's um, given us an opportunity, uh, everybody an opportunity, to really sit back and reflect and, and think through what we were doing. Uh, for the Hosted Buyer Programme, our Hosted Buyer Programme was always the most flexible programme in the industry. But um, we maybe were not as vocal at explaining that. And I think the break has enabled us to come back and really explain how it's different to other programmes. The fact that um, we, we've completely changed the registration process and simplified that. It's much easier for people to get into the programme and, and to register for a start. And that was something that we had a lot of feedback on previously. Also, the fact that we charge no fees, no cancellation fees. And and also the fact that um, people are free to build their own schedule at the show. So our tools make it easy for people to decide who they want to meet and how they want to um, take part in the show in terms of individual appointments or booking into stand presentations. And um, especially for this year, we want people to come and participate in the show that's going to be most meaningful and valuable to them and to the exhibitors as well, which means that we're not putting any um, quotas on the appointment numbers that they have to have. We trust people to come and participate in the show in a, a professional way. We know that 99.9% um, of people always did that anyway. And so we want people to come make the appointments that are going to be the best for them. And therefore, they will be the best for our exhibitors. And we want people to be able to build their schedule, including all the educational opportunities that we have available as well. Really, all we ask of our hosted buyers is that they come to the show with an intention to look to place business with our exhibitors and that they spend the full day in the show. That is our ask and that they then make appointments with those people that are going to be most valuable to them. Um, so it's really very simple and it's about trust and it's about mutual um, business opportunities really, which helps everybody. Yeah, it's a kind of grown up way to do business, right? Exactly. Um, can you paint a picture and give some detail and perhaps explain the difference between Hall 8, the exhibit hall, and Hall 9, where we've really worked hard to build um, an experiential area, if you like? Absolutely. So um, through the years, sort of 2018, 2019, we were building out Hall 9 to create an experiential zone. Um, for those who haven't been to the show before, we've got a um, sort of glass roofed area that separates Hall 8 and Hall 9. Hall 8 is where the appointments take place, where the um, exhibitors have their booths. Um, and we have some seating areas and what have you in that area. But we have really spent time thinking through how we can create a cohesive experience zone in the whole of Hall 9. So we have um, really taken our nature theme to another level in terms of the design and the flow of that area. The educational area, the Inspiration Hub, um, has got a, a fantastic design with three um, theatres, uh, Canyon Theatre, Forest Theatre and Ocean Theatre. Uh, we've also got um, new partnerships um, around how some of our partners show up to 
um, enhance both the experience and the education in that area. So uh, DRPG and Maritz have a theatre. They're providing education all through the show on how to create a better experience and that will be linked to the Inspiration Hub. But we also have ECA, MPI and some of our media partners like SIM actually experimenting with exhibiting in a different way. And that's one of the things that a lot of people have talked about through the pandemic, how will trade shows be different? And I think one of the ways that uh, trade shows can be different is how the exhibitors actually show up to represent themselves. And um, in some ways, not everything has to change, but some of our partners are working with us to experiment. And it would be great to have feedback. And I would say it is an experiment. So come in and uh, give us the feedback, what worked, what didn't, and how can we do that better? We also have a new food court area, again, all around this theme, hosted by a lounge as well, created around this theme. Um, and so, and also a new media zone as well, which has gone all digital. So I think what we're really trying to do is differentiate between the business end of the show um, in Hall 8 and then this experience area where you can come and it's a very different atmosphere. We have music in there, we have different smells, different sounds. Um, and for people to both learn how maybe they could put that into their own events, but also that people have that different um, experience when they come to the show. Um, and I think that will be, I think that will be sort of the future of all type, all events. Um, and it's a way that we can manifest that in a big trade show. Mm, yeah. So we really encourage people when they come to Frankfurt to just cross the gallery, Galleria from Hall 8. Don't, just don't leave uh, Hall 9 out of their plans because it's, it's really going to be worthwhile. And as you said, they may be able to take new ideas back to their organizations and implement them very, very quickly. So, and that's what we want to do, right? We want to bring innovation to the industry and, and use the show as a showcase, literally. Absolutely. So we're going to see quite a few trends and some, obviously a lot of new business, new business models at the show. What have you been hearing and what are you seeing about uh, on that sort of new, that leading edge? What's, what's changed? What can people expect? Well, I think for a start, I think a lot of people um, might be surprised at how many renovations have taken place in this period, how many new openings there are. So I would really encourage people to explore the show in that light as well. So certainly go make appointments with those people that you know you might have business for but also book into stand presentations or go and see the convention bureaus and ask them what's new what's changed in the destinations in the hotels or with the tech providers because so much has changed and there's been an extraordinary amount of investment actually if you think about two years where the industry's been hibernating if you like the investment has been amazing so I think there are a lot of new venues um, a lot of venues that have put in new technology to help you create hybrid events for example so just go and talk to people I think that's really important and, ex and really explore um, so that's sort of the whole eight side and the exhibitors for us, we're seeing trends like the fact that new ways of working, this new sort of uh, hybrid working model that we're all navigating at the moment is leading to an increase in certain types of events um, that bring teams together, maybe once a month, once a quarter, um, for um, team building and um, to sort of really develop their team dynamics. I think incentive travel is going to see a real boon for that. We can see that the demand for travel in the world as a whole is um, just ex increasing exponentially. And that as well, I think, is going to have a massive positive impact on the incentive travel business in particular, in terms of really people understanding that as a true motivator and reward. Um, and all of those things are going to impact the industry. Of course, tech. Event tech has, you know, gone through roller coasters and still is in many regards um, in, change of cha in terms of changing their business model. So I, I would really encourage people to explore the tech area as well from that perspective to understand how the platforms have changed and can help them. And one of the other things that we've, we're seeing is, you know, um, the uh, mental health issues and stress. So we have had a wellbeing lounge before. I think that will be even more popular this year. 
but one of the new things that I'm really excited about is right next to the Inspiration Hub in Hall 9, we have a new listening lab where we have qualified therapists and coaches who will be um, doing some light educational sessions, but also you can book in for appointments with them to actually really experience the power of being listened to. So if you feel that you really need um, to um, understand what it is to be coached, um, to go through therapy or just to talk to somebody. And these are people outside of the industry. They don't know our industry, but they're trained in what they do. I think it'll be a really fantastic opportunity for people. And I, I really hope people um, will take advantage of that. Yeah, it was even interesting for me hearing you talk about everything we've done. I think we've put together an extraordinarily rounded package that speaks to the, the individual um, and to the, the business person that's represented there too, right? So. So to close, Karina, can you just give us an explanation, um, just really nail it for those people who might be sitting on the fence about why they should show up in Frankfurt on May the 31st for IMEX in Frankfurt 2022? I would just say that, you know, if you are really serious about your, um, your professionalism in the industry, if you really want to take a giant leap forward in terms of whatever it is you're working on, whether that is placing RFPs, understanding who's in the industry still, connecting with peers, um, you know, really uh, doing something for yourself, um, having some free education that you can't get anywhere else as well. You have, as you say, a totally rounded package. And I really think that at this point in the industry, it's important to show up and show up at the industry events to also place yourself in the industry and put yourself a step forward for yourself, your business and your clients. And I think this is a really important moment for all of us to do that at IMEX, but also with the trade associations that you're involved with, um, show up at the events and show that you are part of the industry and that you know what's going on for the next six months as well. Mm. That's a great closing message. Thank you. So for those of you who maybe are uncertain, please show up. You've heard um, the, how important it is not to make assumptions about what the industry is doing. The world has changed. IMEX has changed you have probably changed you too. So we look forward to seeing you in May in Frankfurt. Thank you.